Just another minor update here, continuing the uh, reporting on the plague that is sweeping through the fortress. We've lost a whole new batch of dwarves. Rob Staley IV is dead. Lord Blacklock, one of the babies, dead. Nami the Third gone. Alunir the Fourth, our main medical dwarf and psychiatrist, dead. That's a real big blow to the fortress right there. <clears throat> um, Zartine dead. Napoleon at Waterloo dead. And a couple of stray animals in there. So, like usual, I will continue to let the dwarves just randomly fall over dead. And, and whenever enough of them die, I will provide an update, and we can we can shed tears for those who have passed. Because I don't think it's ever going to stop as long as this fortress goes. As long as that blood has been spilled on the ground here, they're just going to continue to share it amongst themselves, I guess. Yay, another good piece of news. After all those deaths from the plague, Thovocaine, baby, got a little bit, um... What's the word? I I'm not good with words. He got a little bit... I'm going to make you guys sit here with me. He got motivated. There we go. The Volcane has created Imal Cactal, Estazmanak, a tower cap casket. I'm thinking he's maybe creating his own casket. It's perfect size for him. So let's take a look at it. It is called the Sense Brim, the Contained Tribute. Um, and what did you put on that? It has no value at all. Sense Brim, the Contained Casket. And oh my god, he wrote a book on it. This is a tower cap casket. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with tower cap and encircled with bands of tower cap, giant cave swallow bone, cave spider silk, and malachite. This object is adorned with hanging rings of tower cap and menaces with spikes of cave spider silk. On the item is an image of Yurwithay's washed mushroom, the keeper, and camels and cobalt. Washed mushroom is surrounded by the camels. The artwork relates to the taming of the camels of the humid desert by the Keeper of Washed Mushroom in the early winter of 506, during the seventh journey of Washed Mushroom. On the item is also an image of Nish Fortune Ivory, the treasure of Wheeling, the deity of trade and wealth, depicted as a male steel dwarf, and Malachite. Nish Fortune Ivy, the treasure of Wheeling, is laughing, and on the item is an image of Decost Bucklegate, the jade dwarfette and dwarfs and giant cave swallow bone. The cost Buck Gate is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the Jade Dwarfette to cost Buck Gate to the position of king at the Trade of Nuts in 292. That is a very ornate casket there from a little itty bitty baby. Um, I'm, well, I, I don't have any tombs yet, really. I mean, so far all dwarves have been buried equally in the the climbing tower here, just level after level of of coffins and memorial slabs and the occasional loose bones that haven't been picked up yet all the way up to the top of the tower. Quite extreme. It is 4th Granite, 1087 early spring, population of 103, and um, the dwarves are still continuing to build the walls outside. At some point I'm going to get the bridges built over these huge gaping holes that go down, down, down. There we go. Channel this little middle section out, and that'll work. Just kind of make them a deep pit, but you can still climb out of them. Even though by the time I'm done, all of the ramps that lead back into the fortress will be removed. That way, if anything does fall in, they can only climb out on the outside of the walls. Uh, but that's going to be a little bit later. You might also notice that it's raining here. I have decided to use some tools of the dwarf trade, and I am using DF Hack to make it rain. That means any time a dwarf walks outside, the rain washes all of that, all of the blood and extract and other gunk that's on them. Oh God, where are you going, salty nut? He's winded, hungry, thirsty. He is screwed up. Trouble breathing. He's probably gonna die. I'm guessing he's found some of that extract and decided to chow down on it. It must smell good, like, like antifreeze to dogs or something. The dwarves are just drawn to it. But it washes it off, and then I use a DF hack that cleans up any blood and extract that is laying on the ground. It's kind of a cheap way to go about it, but I don't know any other way to do it, and I'm tired of my dwarves randomly dying. It's ridiculous. Uh, I cannot be losing my most valuable dwarfs that I've spent years training 
to something that I have no control over at all. I guess, you know, I understand maybe that's part of the game, but I also know that in the version I'm using that that extract is completely overpowered, and that Dion himself even admitted that and uh, toned it down in later versions of Genesis. Fortunately, I can't use those changes, so um, I'm doing what I can. Like, let's see, I'm going to pause it, and all this blood right here, I'm going to use DF Hack, DF Clean Map, and voila. All that blood and stuff is gone. That means no dwarfs have to bring a mop or, you know, soap or whatever they bring and rags and scrub it up and try to clean it up and then get themselves killed from it. We'll just let the, the gods in the sky deal with it. <sighs> I just really don't want to lose any more dwarfs, but I know I'm going to. Somebody's in the hospital right now wheezing and coughing. It's Raid Soft. He's unconscious with a fever. He's next to die. Does anyone else have a fever? Swiss Army is still in there. Most of these other dwarfs that are in here, they're, they're all immobilized. Paralyzed from the ankle down, unable to ever walk again. Oh, this damn plague. Got dead bodies all... Look at all these damn animals. Good lord. It's because my butcher shops are disabled. I don't have any butchers. I tested it out. I tested the butchering skill on two more people, and they instantly died. So... I don't know what I'm going to do here. I can't butcher animals without my dwarves succumbing like this poor bastard's about to. <sighs> the neurotoxin is working its way through his system. He's just gasping for breath. There's nothing they can even do for him. Not even a, a cold wash rag on his forehead will help break this fever. His lungs are seizing up, filling with fluid. <sighs> this is awful. Completely awful. Let's see, the smelters are completely shut down. I guess I've got all of my ore smelted that I want to. I've got all of my armor made that I need for the time being, anyways. There's Vazer. He's coated in blood again, even though he hasn't done any fighting for a long time. Need to get him to go stand out in the rain. Polar Beard, the third, is there. You're washed off. You got a pond grabber leather backpack, a steel, a red steel short sword, to cut through even the the hardest bone and and armor and all other types of layers of defense, like a hot knife through butter. Axie in the fourth, you're there. You've got a left upper arm injury and a right hand injury. Unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, but the gel. Each jail cell does have its own stock of food and wine. Dwarven L. Plump Helmet L, actually, I think. Let's check. But this is where all the dwarves, well, not all of them, but a lot of them come to drink because our whiskey locker is running out. Let's see, in that plant barrel, there is Plump Helmets. Plant barrel there. Fungi Wood Barrel. Do I not have Plump Helmets in there? Maybe they're just grabbing Plump Helmets. There's a Zinc Flask. What's in the flask? Nothing. It's bone dry. A kapok barrel, nothing in that. Plant barrel filled with plump helmets. Tower cap barrel, empty. Plump helmets in that barrel. That one's empty. I guess I don't have any booze. Yeah, I've got two drinks, so never mind. They're just in there eating plump helmets in the gel cell. Chowing down on them. I can't keep up with the demand right now for breweries, so... None of the dwarfs have alcohol. Which is rather unfortunate, but they'll manage until production catches back up, even though it may take some time. We've got camels trapped in here. Not that we're doing anything with them. I don't think I have any hunters. Ever since Z Lunatic decided to go face off against a blood spider, I haven't activated any more hunters. Hunters tend to die extremely violent deaths extremely quickly, too. They don't last that long in these fortresses. Genesis creatures are not really made to be hunted, I, I don't think. They are more the hunters, if you would. There's somebody important. It's Lee James, our mayor. The legendary liar. That's what he's skilled at. Let's see, where's he at? Yep, he's a legendary liar. I think he's the best liar in the whole damn fortress, and that is why he got the position of mayor. So congratulations, Lee James. Continue to deal with those liaisons and merchants to the best of your ability. Get us the best goods you can. Let's see, Raidsoft, you're winded, unconscious, and Merrick Kane is there diagnosing you. I assume that means you'll die soon. I don't think they're going to be able to save you. 
They might, though. Our doctors have surprised me before. They could definitely do so again. Come on, save him! Save him, Merrick! This is what you've trained for. He's unconscious winded. He's partially paralyzed. He cannot breathe. Give him dwarf CPR. Oh. And Raidsoft suffocates. Before Merrick King could even really diagnose him and find out what's wrong, he gave in and that's that for you. Merrick takes off. He's gonna go have a nice hard drink somewhere. Just too much death and destruction for these dwarven babies growing up. What's he doing? He's giving water to Z-Hall right now, so he didn't go take a break. He's a hard-working doctor. I, I take that back. He's not a drunkard. He's doing everything he can to help the wounded. Even though, before too much longer, I'm gonna build a wall right here. And we're gonna seal this hospital off. And they're all going to die. And then we're going to replace them with migrants that can actually walk and do stuff. And actually help out the fortress. So it is 10th Granite, 1087. Down to a population of 102. I'm going to let the dwarves get back to doing what they're doing. No invasions, no sieges for a while. Um, I'm just going to continue to build up the walls to carve down this mountain. I've got one level left of sand to remove. It's the very bottom level. Uh, so, before too much longer, yes, we'll be seeing this spire in all of its glory, gloryful, beautiful 3D gloryness, gloryful, no, beautifulness, gloryful. There we go. Well, the plague right now is sweeping through the residential area. Z Lunatic, you're unconscious in bed, having trouble breathing. You crawled into your room. I've got one, two, three more dwarves, I think. Let's see. Capianon, you're unconscious, winded. Aqueous Lupus the third. You were such a fine warrior too. You had four kills. Damn it. You're gonna die. Infidel, you're just sleeping in there. Um, Salty Nut, I think you might be fine, you're just unconscious. But there's three more dwarves for sure that are all going to uh, suffocate rather shortly. I have to imagine that there's more of them out there. But here's the thing. I just checked them. None of them are covered in any type of blood at all. There's somebody else wheezing. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's Z-Sword. He's winded. Z-Lunatic, you've suffocated. Oh, Greybeard suffocated. Oh, who's next? And it hits everyone, just blam, blam, blam. Like, it'll be groups of four or five in a row just die. Tilla suffocated. Z-Sword suffocated. Capianon suffocated. Who would the fuck up there died? Box McCloud V suffocated. You've got to be joking me. And I have no idea where it's coming from. Aqueous Lupus has suffocated. None of these people were butchers, so it's not butchering. I was wrong about that, I believe. Colonel Crunch has suffocated. I've not had a character, one of my named characters, last for more than a season in this fortress without succumbing to some type of death. Where are they Where are they getting all this blood from? How are they dying? Where is this fever coming from? What is going on? I don't I don't know what is this? What's going on? What's happening? All that's going to be left here is the Niths before too much longer. It's going to be Nith Fortress, and that's it. All of the dwarfs are simply going to die from some strange disease that sweeps the land. I'm, I, I'm, out, of I'm out of coffins with that many dead. I'm going to have to build more coffins now. I think Thovokane had the right idea. Everyone, go make your own coffins right now. In fact, let's set this up. Let's see. Let's see. At this mason's workshop, coffin. Two coffin. At this one, two coffin. Two coffins. Everyone can pump out two coffins. Everyone who's a mason. That should cover almost all dwarfs. Everyone make a coffin for yourself. And then make a coffin for your loved one. Or, if you're like Vazer and you don't have any loved ones, just uh, make a coffin for someone you hate. And there we go. That should be enough coffins to last last me a little bit of time. God damn, dead bodies all over the place. It, it's 13th Granite. It was like three days since that. Three in-game days or something since the last video. Since it hasn't been that long at all. In-game time, anyways. And more dwarves die. Are you, are you wheezing? There goes 3-toe with a left lower arm injury. 
And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to make it rain again. Everybody keep watching. DF weather. Make it rain. And here comes the rain. I could make it snow if I wanted to. But snow is not going to wash the blood off of the dwarves. And at this point, I don't even know if it is blood. It very well could be. Like, what's this? This is a pile of blood. That's a whole bunch of blood. Forgotten Beast Extract, Uznan Take Brutal, Sergeant Shima's Blood the Fourth. So, yeah. Let's clean all that up, too. Just get the hell out of here. DF Clean Map. Go, go. Ghost Maid. Ghost Janitor Service. They just sweep through the area and clean up all the blood. I don't know if that's maybe causing flare-ups on all these dwarves. I mean, maybe I wash the blood off of them and then they die because it gets reactivated with a wedding agent. I don't really know what the hell's going on. But I guess I'm just going to ride it through. I guess we'll just continue. It is 14th granite, down to a population of 94. Gosh dang, look at all those pink, purple names. That means they're dead gone, no longer with us. Let's see, I didn't lose any nobles that time, thankfully. <sighs> Lee James, you need to do something. Be a better mayor. Send out some type of mandate for these dwarfs to clean themselves. And designate all this to be dug out here. Match it up with the rock. And once they clean all this out, I'll just go back in and remove the rest of it. Almost have all the sand gone. That's pretty much the only good news through all of this. I think maybe if we want to really discuss it and get into it and think about it, I think we're being punished for our hubris here and trying to carve away the volcano. We are carving the volcano into a monument to ourselves here and to our dwarves. The volcano is already badass enough without us showing up and desecrating it like we have. It did give us water and adamantine whenever we sacrifice the dwarves to it and now we're carving away at it i mean it's like the giving tree here we are just taking and taking and taking and i think because of that it's demanding something in return and it's spreading this plague amongst our dwarves i just hope that it can find some forgiveness soon something in its heart to stop taking our dwarves from us Let's see. The floors here, yeah, they're going along rather well. This is going to take a decent amount of time for the dwarves to carry all the pieces out to. I still haven't gone around to um, designating the, the gate towers yet. That'll be coming up soon. Even though I won't be designating those on that on screen with you, that's my special time. Um, let's see. I don't know what else we're going to be doing out here. I need to get all this filled in. This is all marble, by the way. I'm using all of the marble from the fortress and hauling it up from the depths of hell. I'm building it out here. And what are you camels doing? That's not a walkway, that's a wall. Get off of there. Make easy target if we had any hunters. But I don't. Oh well, I'm going to let the dwarves get back to cleaning up and rolling around in blood. We'll come back when the next batch of them decides they want to uh, suicide together or get claimed by the volcano. You know, any number of choices we've got here. Okay, well, before I go ahead and actually pull the trigger here and seal this door closed for life... Well, not for life, but for the life of those dwarves remaining inside. I just want to go ahead and commemorate this date as the date that we sealed the damned away uh, so that they could meet their fate behind closed doors in the darkness together, but yet still by themselves. It is 15th fell site, 1087 late spring, population of 102. We got a whole bunch of migrants. They're all named and they're mixed in right now. Most of them are still carrying stones for the masonry up top, the work on the wall. But um, this door right here, just going to press L to forbid it. And there we go. And no one else will be able to go in there and take water to these poor wounded dwarves. Um, there is somebody who just died right here, just died of dehydration. Who was it? It was Bagwam the Third. 
before I could even get the wall and the door built, he had already died of dehydration. I guess all of the nurses and doctors right now are currently busy elsewhere, which is fine by me because we don't have anyone injured, and we haven't had anyone injured uh, for quite some time, except for these folks in here, who there's nothing we can do for them. <sighs> so, just to say goodbye to them, I guess. Who do we have here? We've got Daft Punk, Starving, Thirsty. Let's take a look at their lives a little bit. Doesn't have any friends, no relationships, worships Godem and Omer, and those are the only two deities he's taught. The only two things, period, in his life anymore. They're in his head while well, he's sitting there in his coma all day long. Zehal the Fourth, Soul Cloister. You have two deities and two dead pets, Dolek and Arist. Good riddance to you. Swiss Army, you were choked out for so long that there's nothing they can do for you. You were brain dead when they brought you down here to the hospital. You have two deities as well, Nish and Ugash. <sighs> no other friends, family, or relatives. Urst McIonized. Let's see, you actually had some kills. You killed two gray werewolves in your prime before getting wounded. And you worship Ugash and Godem. Godem is, of course, the god of nightmares. And he's given all of you your nightmare. J71159, our first robot model. Let's see, he's got four kills under his belt. Looks like one of them was a dwarf that he had to put in his place. And at this point in time, you've only got two relationships as well. The two deities that have held you out this long. Dowd Pride, you've got three kills. One, the Forgotten Beast, Hody. And then two stray kobolds who um, tried to ambush someone. I think you gave your life basically defending someone. And that's how you got injured, I think. Um, let's see. Your husband, Daedric Dwarf III, is dead. And your only son, Daedric Pride, is dead as well. So it's kind of fitting that you die as well in the hospital here and take the long journey to join them wherever it is. And Toady won. He had a few kills as well. Delinkus, the Kobold, and Krorin, the Kobold. He didn't have any relationships from his long stay in the hospital here, and he only worships Dolek and Arist. <sighs> Once they're gone, we'll get the hospital cleared out, and, um... I'll wait for the next batch of injuries to come fill its ranks. And we've got merchants arriving, of course. And the dog's going crazy. So it's 16th Fell Sight, 1087, late spring. I'm gonna let the, uh, the wounded here pass on. And really, that's all I can do. Okay, well, just another update on the plague here. You can see the date in the top right. 21st fell site. We had a whole streak of deaths here. Um, Ero Lisi V, Joe, Robzor, um, Decimus Bloodykiss didn't even have a chance to prove himself before he suffocated here. Didn't quite live up to his name. Tells Darcy, dead. Pylops, Slaxer, Merrick Kane, one of our longtime babies, dead. Uh, Metal Slime Hunt the Third, another longtime dwarf. We don't have that many thirds left at this point, I believe. They're all starting to die out. Um, Sergeant Shima the Seventh, your seventh reincarnation has suffocated. It's getting quite ridiculous. You have no luck in this fortress. Resner suffocated. Atir suffocated. Oh, ridiculous. And Ur Urst McIonized, you starved to death down in the hospital. The rest of these dwarfs will be going soon, no doubt. And probably, before too much longer, a new batch of plague-ridden dwarfs. We can only wait and see what batch will be claimed next. Okay, well, let's mark this day as well. It is 21st Malachite, 1087 Midsummer, population all the way down to 91. We have had some... Actually, I don't think we've had any new migrants arrive since the last update. But, <sighs> J7 finally died. The last dwarf sealed up in the medical vault. It's finally given way, so we'll, you know, un we'll unforbid that door and claim all the bodies in there. And send in the extraction team to retrieve the dead, to fumigate the area, and to get it sanitary for the next medical team to come through. <sighs> he put up one hell of a fight. It took him a long time to finally succumb. I'm not sure what he was sustaining on. Probably just his robotic hatred of all organic dwarves. 
wondering how he could be so cursed as to end up immobilized and stuck to a bed. And there they go. Everybody diving in with their face masks on. They'll still be pissed off because of the miasma. But thankfully, none of them are going to be upset that they lost friends, or that their friends decayed in front of them, because none of those dwarfs in there had any friends. How sad for them. The weather's cleared up, and there's more blood, so you're damn right, I'm still making it rain. I'm still cleaning up the blood with DF Clean Map. Oh, I'm hoping it's working. I don't care if it's cheating at this point. And... Bloosh. There goes a section of the caravan, chopped down by Lord British, who rode it down. Only one Z-level. For some reason, I had a long strand sticking all the way out through here. Just one little stick of land that, um, for some reason, wouldn't give in and die. So, channeled it and let it fall, fall down to the ground, crumbled into a million pieces of sand. Thankfully, it didn't hurt anyone. So, you know what? That does mean that the entire fortress is carved out now. We're carved all the way down to the ground. How about I pause it and uh, jump over to the 3D view real quick? Okay, well here we are. Might be kind of choppy, but here's Shovecopper and all of her carved out glory with the first layer of walls built. Um, the very first foundation set of stones. There's one of the corners. You can see I've got the, the stairs already up about four levels high that'll probably be as tall as the towers go any taller than that and they just become frivolous and worthless unless you're trying to make them reach towards the sky in some type of ultra mega project glory which I'm I'm not ready to do it I'm a mega project yet probably never on video I don't know the trenches are all dug out for the uh, the draw bridges I'll be getting those built hopefully fairly soon there's that one that one this is the foundation the shining bronze face that reflects the sunlight far to the east to alert the traders and of course the lovely entrance of shove copper i did grind down the corner of the volcano here because it was um it was reaching up pretty high i'm probably going to grind down more of the volcano um I don't think I'll grind it all down. I might, though. I don't know. Depends how long this fortress goes on. If I get bored enough, I might grind it all down straight to the ground. Um, I don't know. That depends if I can craft this centerpiece here into some type of formidable tower. Get rooms crafted in it. Get them all set up and decorated. Get them some purpose. I'm still not sure. This is the area where the dwarves train, of course. Outside in the sun. Or underneath the ledges when they need a break. Yep, this is Shove Copper. Of course, we could go down and um, look inside the volcano, but we've seen that. It's just a jumbled mess. The Z levels are far too close together, and um, way too, way too populated to mean anything. Of course, there's the there's the forge. That means the dining hall is right here. Yep, this is the dining area then. This is the uh, the fabled dining hall that overlooks the water down below, even though I can't see it in this version yet. I have to wait for the next fortress before I can update to water, I believe. And then, um, let's see, this is right here, the wells. Of course, you can't see the wells, but you can see the holes below them, dipping into the water. And this is the hospital, where dwarfs go to die. Some of them do manage to get fixed. But most of them just die. Oh well. Let's go back to the fortress. The 2D fortress. So yeah, that's what it looks like for now. Nothing too fancy. I'm sure that we can do better um, in the future. Given more time. Who knows, maybe by the time we turn into the next century. Yeah, by 1100, midsummer, We'll have this place finished and finalized. I'm sure there'll be more battles before then, though. I'm bound to turn invasions on again. And as long as the plague continues to ravage through the fortress and take dwarfs to hell with it, um, we'll never be completely invincible, because even the strongest warrior will eventually succumb and find himself at the mercy of the fever. 
I think I'm gonna build these roads here out of schist brick, schist, schist kebab, schist bricks, all the way through here, and around the fortress to each gate. Just wrap through them. Maybe have little guard posts or little guard buildings along that route. I'm still not sure exactly how the outside courtyard's gonna be um, built up. I would like to utilize this whole huge back area. I don't know, maybe find, maybe get a water pump stack and pump a whole bunch of water up here. I don't think it would, I don't know if I could do that though. Or if it would all evaporate from the heat before I could pump it up there. How many pump stacks would it take? And I've never built a pump stack before, so that's another challenge in itself. Looking up the blueprints on the Wikipedia. Bringing them into the game. Oh well. It is 25th Malachite, 91 dwarfs, and let them get back to their suffering and silence. Okay, well, we've got another artifact created for us here, this time by the legendary um, baby making machine, Lockman. You've created Uval Lagseth Udar Amzith, a bulldog leather high boot. Not bad. Um, it's a, I don't know. I, I don't think it actually makes a pair though. So it's just one legendary boot to for someone to wear around the fortress. I don't know if I have any one-legged dwarfs that would actually be able to completely appreciate it. But it's called Barrake, the Reign of Alchemies. And it doesn't have a value attached to it, probably because it's too much. This is a bulldog leather high boot. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is studded with cobalt and encircled with bands of melanite and marble. This object is adorned with hanging rings of morion and menaces with spikes of horse leather and cow bone. On the item is an image of stone roots and bulldog leather. And on the item is an image of Lindsay, frilly lashes, the Nord, and sand lions and cave spider silk. Lindsay frilly lashes is surrounded by the sand lions. The artwork relates to the taming of the sand lions of the humid desert by the Nord Lindsay frilly lashes in the mid-spring of 942 during the journey of the Nord. And on the item is an image of squeezing admired, the lead high boot and cow bone. So I guess I do have two, two uh, legendary boots then. I think that squeezing admired is our other one, right? Let's see, tower cap, amulet, a lead high boot. Yeah, so we do. We have a pair of legendary boots now. And this is squeezing admired. Been a while since it's been, it was crafted. Um... There you go. I don't know who crafted it exactly at this point. It is a shame it doesn't tell you who crafted the artifacts right out to the side. Um, but it's in the videos somewhere, I'm sure. Um, let's see what else we have going along in the fortress here. I'm expanding the stairwell, making it much wider, trying to ease my path in a little bit still. My frames are still suffering every once in a while. They're dipping down to 15 to 20. It's just one of those things that happen as the fortresses, as fortresses age. So I'm doing my best to combat that right now. Also have people still dying from the plague. Mostly still new recruits though. Like there's Triple H, he just showed up, or not, not too long ago. Etir, Mr. O Oasis, you've been with us for a while I think. You suffocated. Capianon, the seventh dead. Ferret Fiend, the fifth dead. Yeah, they're all buried somewhere now. Well... There's a body, so... They're not all buried, but they will be soon. Um, let's see, I've got plenty of coffins still. I'm getting tombs dug out for individual warriors soon. Vazer's gonna be getting one, Master Azra's gonna be getting one. I'm gonna be going through the list of dwarfs, and everyone who's got a certain amount of kills um, will get one. Anyone who, well, probably just brave warriors, actually. And a nobles if they demand them, I guess. I don't want to give a tomb to everyone who creates an artifact, because let's be real, not all artifacts are created equal. And I'm still waiting for an artifact weapon to show up. That creator might get a tomb, depending on how awesome the weapon is. As long as it's not like a crossbow or something. Got dwarfs churning out blocks all year round. I need as many shished blocks as I can get for the roadways. And of course, I am still building the floors up here. 
And it, I think this whole section right here along the sides of the, the walkway, those will be fortifications over the gate. Most of the walkway are actually going to be uh, solid walls. That way my dwarfs can't get shot, except in very specific locations where we'll bundle the archers up at. Who died up there? A stray war dog corpse. That's weird. Probably one of those war dogs that suffocated. I don't even know how they're suffocating. It's ridiculous. There's another pile of blood. Let's see. Werewolf blood. Werewolf blood. Blind Chaos the Third blood. Oznun Tick Brutal's blood. Um, you know what? Let's wipe that off the face of the earth. Nuke it. Blam. And it's gone. I don't care. Like I said, I've mentioned I think that's cheating. I don't care anymore. I am combating this plague with the wrath, with the power of the gods, and that's what these tools are. It's the only way to fight it. Soap and water is not getting the job done. It's just creating a bigger problem. We are down to 94 dwarfs. Haven't peaked over the 100 mark for quite some time, which is rather, um, rather depressing, actually. Um, actually, I've got two squads stationed there. What are they doing? That's right. I had them... There. I had them getting ready to attack this Draltha. I might as well show you guys a little bit of wildlife clearing. Charge the Draltha. Drive your swords through... There's two of them. A, B. Kill both of the Draltha. What are they doing? Mating back there? This isn't a Draltha... Um, hang on. I'm derping over the menu screen right here. There we go. Get both Draltha. Bolt Dralta. Somebody fires an arrow. This is gonna be such an easy fight, but I want the combat log. And I don't have I don't have my combat log. Damn. Shatari. She's fighting. She fires a bolt that strikes the Dralta in the left front leg. A tendon's been torn. She is the best archer we've got right now. Um, she is a high master marks dwarf, a high master archer, competent wrestler. She is getting up there. She's going to be leading her own squad soon, and she's an expert brewer on the side. Also, apologies if you're not a she. I don't know. I'm just guessing on these things. And the dwarfs charge forward. One Draltha slips by. Let's see, who do we have here? Polarbeard III and Master Azra's up there. They've got this Draltha unconscious, winded, skulls dangling, getting ready to chop his head off. This Draltha is in extreme pain, being pummeled by... Mr. Phaser beam from behind. He slams him against the tower cap mushroom there. Drives his sword through the Dralta's belly. And Master Azra comes up from behind and just hacks at it with his axe. Blood and gore and nasty Dralta bits fly all over the place. What a scene. So you guys can stand down. You guys, congratulations there. A little bit of wildlife clearing. Nothing too complicated. Been having to do that from time to time. Otherwise, the Draltha will... They'll shake one of the uh, the dwarfs around and kill them. We've seen that happen before. i do my best to avoid that. Uh, let's see. Theater. I did put tables and chairs in here so people can come and eat while other dwarfs um, act out on stage. I normally have something set to repeat. We'll have a comedy set to repeat for now. Let somebody practice their comedy skill. I'm kind of wondering if that's how our mayor became a legendary liar. Maybe he was doing a drama or something? I don't know. Urist McUnicorn, the last surviving Urist we have. He's got two notable kills. A little bit of injury. Ability to grasp is somewhat impaired. But he's, um, holding on. Last time he was worked on was in 1084 by Jufidel. What weapons do you have? You got a bronze metal shirt on. On the item is a rendition of a well-designed image of you. The image is a symbol of the trade of nuts, a dwarven civilization. It is made from alabaster. So somebody decorated your beautiful bronze mail shirt there. Not bad. Iron Greaves, do you have a weapon? Surely you do. Yeah, a sun gold shield and a bronze warhammer bolt in your left hand. And a spell wood flask filled with muddy water. I think the dwarfs do that sometimes. They fill them up and then they'll never empty them out. He may drink the muddy water, but I'm not sure. There's Slaxer the Six. He's showing up on stage to perform a comedy. He doesn't have any other skills except a glass maker. So we'll see how his comedy act is here. 
See if uh, Raid Soft and Urst McUnicorn lose their lunch listening to him. You know what? I also haven't used this for a while. Let's sacrifice a few weapons there. I don't know if I'll be able to see the dwarf um, whenever they carry the weapon in and sacrifice it. If they'll have... I guess they would, yeah. So we'll see a dwarf carry a weapon down there and we'll see what he's going to sacrifice. And then if we get anything in return, we'll be able to check his hands and see what he, uh, what he got from it. Someone said that you can get really amazing godlike weapons from it. I think De I think someone, maybe Dion, even said the percent is like 5% or 2% chance, so... You do have to burn through a decent amount of weapons. I've got plenty, I just don't want them burning and sacrificing any of my good ones. Ugh. Looks like people are going in there, maybe sitting down for half a second and hearing his routine and saying, Fuck this. Let's go to the dining hall. Who walked in there now? Kelt Knight the Third. He's sitting down to eat. Do you have a title? No. Speak, Galley. Most of the dwarfs that have titles are dead. Which is rather sad. And here comes the weapon, that little dash right there. Who's carrying it? Who's the sacrificer? It's Mr. Weatherpants the Fourth. He's got a co cobalt battle axe coated in draught of blood. What? Is that the one? I guess that we're going to sacrifice the axe that was just used to kill the Dralta. Quick, take it to the altar of war. Sacrifice it in the name of the gods. Well, it's still coated in the blood of the innocent Dralta creature. So he steps it up there and begins doing incantations on it. He takes a thimble of magma that stays hot no matter where we take it in the fortress, and he pours it on there and begins eating through the blade, working other arcane magic dipping it in a vat of that forgotten beast blood that's acidic. Begins boiling and bubbling. Come on, man. Do the incantations right and get us something amazing. I want to see a god slayer weapon. I think we only have two named weapons in this fortress. Which is what... Those are, those are what I consider artifact weapons. If the dwarves have spilled enough blood with that weapon to give it a name, then that weapon is um, the top tier weapon of the fortress. Doesn't matter what it's made of. Like Nazimbul, I think it's what it's called. That battle axe that Box McLeod, Box MacLeod, uh, named in his final last act of bravery. Fortress has kind of calmed down since those days. It's been quite some time since the last forgotten beast has shown up. No point in rushing the sacrifice, I guess. Might as well take your time there. Oh, did you do it wrong, damn it? And he did. We only have... Yep, damn it. So I guess I'll keep my eyes on them. See if they get anything in return from it. If they do, I'll come back and show you what we got. Uh, maybe it'll be like an adamantine weapon or a slade weapon or who knows what. It is 17th sandstone, 1087 mid-autumn. Population of 94. And the dwarves are just listening to Slaxer practice his stand-up. Even the birds are joining in. Or not. Whoa, and hang on. The second weapon that was just sacrificed was a cobalt axe. And it looks like Rob Staley is walking away with a still scimitar of Viper Lord. What the heck is that? This is a still scimitar of Viper Lord. That is all the information I've got on it. And that is pretty damn tasty sounding. I think that was worth sacrificing a cobalt battle axe for. Hmm. Let's see. I've got two openings in the boats of kissing here. Position 3 and position 5. I have a feeling whoever I assign to this position is probably going to die, however. Um... Rob, you're carrying the Scimitar of the Viper Lord, so let's assign you to that position. You might as well. You just got you picked the weapon up and it automatically calls you to battle. Nami the Fourth, you're going in there as well. I'm kind of uh, making the squads a little bit larger. Most of them have six. Some of them have seven. 
And of course we've got the two reserve squads that should have ten. If people would stop dying. You know, I think... I don't even, I don't even want to mention it yet because I'm, I'm probably wrong. But it seems like every time I add someone to these positions in the military, maybe those are the people that die. So, all of these people that I'm adding right now to the military, I'm going to keep my eyes on you. And you know what? Let's add Grimmeth to the Slick Earths. He can begin training his combat skills. Um, or to the Teeth of Creation. God damn it, where the hell? There we go. So no, I did add him to the Slick Earths. And the Teeth of Creation is filled up, still led by Pasakoi. He's battle-hardened and wounded. One of his arms barely works, but he's managing to lead that squad still. They're weakened warriors. But they get the job done when needed. So yeah, I'll keep my eyes on that sword too, see who it ends up with. Actually, wait, no, that's this is what I wanted to do. We're going to give that sword, well, not to Urst McUnicorn. That's who I wanted to give it to, but he's a hammer dwarf. So he won't have any use for a sword. Thomas Merrick, nah, maybe you. Hippo Man, not you, you're wounded, I think. Present Axis, 24 volunteers. Let's see, Thomas Merrick, you're an expert sword dwarf, so let's go to the equipment screen here. And yes, you're going to get the, the Viper Sword here. There we go. The Factional Chamber is a new squad. You, do know, you no longer have an individual choice melee weapon. We're going to assign to you a specific weapon. I could give him a Sengoku Komanaka there, or, right here in the second part of the list, is the Steel Scimitar Viper Lord. We're going to force him to use that. And you can also see that there was Nazimbul down there and the other named weapons. And, um, yes. We can follow those around, actually. Nazimbul was last used to, um, kill those two kobolds by Jello Snark IV, who is dead, by the way. Let's see. Weapons. Um, hit the tab key, switch over to this menu. And let's just quickly scroll down through this. There is Sin Goes Cack. Common Cod. This is a dog bone mace. All crafts dwarfship is of the highest quality. Apparently no one has used that to kill anybody, anything with yet. Not even a single Dralta has spilled blood with that. I uh, know there's Nazimbul. We can view that. This me this large er, an iron battle axe called Dreamy Worries. Nazombumal. Oh, wielded by the first legendary slayer, Box Macliar the Third, Group Rock the Held Enchanter, then picked up by Jello Snark the Fourth, who also earned a title with it, Helmed Shimmer, the Bronze Trumpet of Disappearances. He used it in the final um, years of his life, I think, to kill some stuff with, maybe, I don't know. What did he kill with it? I think he killed Algo Witchletter. Ongo, the Grim General, and Growl Zephyrs. Because the last one that Box Macleod killed with it was the Wyvern here. Timbred Welt Brand, the Luxury of Flares in 1080. And then he died. And Jellosnark didn't die until 1087. So that must not have been his last weapon that he used. Somebody else. That's been setting in storage. Where is it? It is in storage. Nobody wants to use it. It's got too much of a legacy, so they just stuffed it down here in weapon storage. And there it sets. You know what? Fuck that. That's not acceptable. Calrog man, I'm going to assign that weapon to you. Let's see. Weapon... I don't know what your normal weapon is, but tough shit. Let's see. Individual choice melee. Remove that. Specific weapon. Come here, Nazimbul. I want you to spill and drink blood again. So there you go. And you know what, Thomas Merrick? You're good with macing, so you're going to get... Oh, wait, you've already... Did I really... I thought that... Who did I... What? Who did I assign... Okay, hang on. I gotta see something. Who did I want to assign that to? Okay, he's an expert source dwarf. Who is the expert maceman that I didn't want to give that to? Mage Reborn, Pasakoi, no. Thurston, no. I don't think it was Pelotap. He's not a Marks Dwarf, but he will be. 24 Volunteers is a Master Marks Dwarf. You lead a good squad there. Hippo Man, Skilled Wrestler. Urst McUnicorn, that's right. You're going to get the Dogbone Mace. 
was wondering who the hell was our expert hammer dwarf. Here we go. So, Mr. Unicorn, let's remove your individual choice weapon here and give you Sengozkak Kalmanad. And also make sure I didn't screw over anybody else here. I don't think I did. These minions still kind of blow my mind trying to cycle through them. Master Ozra has been assigned a Cobalt Short Sword. That's right. I moved his shield because one of his arms was paralyzed. And um, all he could do was use w one hand. And quite frankly, charging into battle with just a shield to beat people in the face with isn't going to cut it. You need something to stab him in the eye with as well. And Calrog, man, you've got Nazimbul. So, good luck to that squad. Good luck to everyone who's getting a named item. Hopefully you bring glory to its legacy. And uh, continue to spill blood with... At least Nazimbul. The other two named weapons, the Scimitar, the Viper Lord, and the Dogbone Mace, they're ready. They've been ready. The Scimitar has been ready before it was even created. It was sent by the gods, hungry and thirsty. And it won't be too much longer. Once I get the bridges and gates set up and I'm a little bit cheesed out there so that I can control when the sieges get in or which side we charge out, say we've got a werewolf squad to the north, I'll lower this gate and we can charge out, deal with them, charge back in, and then go run around. It's kind of cheap, kind of cheesy, but fuck it. That's my tactics. We're going to do. A, we're gonna use a little bit of tactics when uh, sieges start again. Because <sighs> God knows the plague is going to be killing us forever in this fortress. It is 20 the sandstone, 1087 mid-autumn. And we're just um, doing nothing. Carrying stones, I guess.